Welcome to Victorian Institute of Technology. I'm Dr. Andrea Yarmati, and I'm going to demonstrate Master of Business Administration, Unit MBA 5003, Managing Logistics and Technology, Module F, Supply Chain Design. The appointed textbook is Operation and Supply Chain Management from Russell and Taylor, Chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Learning objective today is explain why companies keep inventory and how advances in IT have impacted inventory decision. Describe the sales and operation process and the importance of reconciling differences. Resource planning, the inputs and outputs to MRP and execute the MRP process. Basic elements of lean eliminate waste, create flow, and continuously improve operations. Explain the multiple dimensions of a good schedule for different types of productive system. Determine which type of schedule is appropriate. Let's start with a real case. Zara, the apparel company, is one of the world's most successful company with 2,000 stores in 88 countries and with 450 million items a year. Most of its production is in-house. Zara also well known about the ability to deliver new clothes to store quickly and in small batches. Twice a week, store manager order clothes and twice a week on schedule, new garment arrive with sold product in, sold in full price. Like industry averages result 85%, which is Zara 60 to 70%. Unsold items in Zara are less than 10% compared to the average uh, 17 20% of other apparel companies. Inventory optimization models help to determine the quantity that should be delivered twice weekly. In Zara, Stores only receive just what they need, being exclusive while avoiding inventories of unpopular stock. Store manager in Zara uh, communicate customer feedback to designer, while Zara uses RFID, radio frequency identification technology, extensively for inventory management. There is an RFID chip in every item which makes Zara to have less employees and save the time to conduct inventory every six weeks instead of every six months. The challenges for Zara is to determine the exact number up to 3,000 items to each 1,500 store, several million items each week that must be determined in few hours. Any further delays can delay store replenishment by a day because of warehouse processing times and transportation schedule. Zara also uses previous store shipment orders and past sale data to develop demand forecast. This forecast is combined with the current store and warehouse inventory to determine optimal shipment quantities. The demand forecast model uses standard regression analysis to predict the upcoming weekly demand for each size of each article in each of Zara stores. But what is inventory management? And what is inventory? Inventory is a stock of items kept to meet for a future demand. Purpose of inventory management is how, how many units to order and when to order. The objective of inventory management is to keep enough inventory to meet customer demand and also be cost effective. Inventory is an obvious candidate for cost reduction. It is estimated that US companies carry over a half trillion dollar in inventories spread out along their supply chains. It is also estimated that the average holding cost of inventory in the United States is between 18% and 35% of the total value of the inventory. Forms of inventory can be raw materials, 
purchase patent supplies, work in process, or item being transported, finally tools and equipment. Recently, information technology has become an enable for effective supply chain management. Because of technology and software, including such IT tools and enterprises resource planning systems, including forecasting software, barcodes, radio frequency identification, EDI and point of sales data, companies can track and locate inventory throughout their supply chain. These technologies have enabled modern supply chain management practices such as vendor management inventory, continuous replenishment programs, supplier hubs, and outsourcing operation to third-party service providers. Let's see what quality management means in the supply chain. Customers usually perceive quality service as availability of goods they want when they want them. Inventory must be sufficient to provide high-quality customer service in operation management. In terms of demand, we can differentiate two forms of demand. Dependent demand, where demand is for items used to produce final products. For instance, tires for autos are a dependent demand item. Or independent demand, where demand for items used by external customer. For example, cars, appliances, computers and houses are examples of independent demand inventory. But what is the inventory cost? It can be carrying cost, cost of holding an item in inventory, ordering cost, which is a cost of replenishing inventory, or shortage cost, temporary or permanent loss of sales when demand cannot be met. In next, we cross the term of inventory control system. There are four major type of inventory system. Continuous inventory system, which is a constant amount is ordered when inventory declines to a predetermined level. Periodic inventory system. An order is placed for a variable amount after a fixed passage of time. The third one is economic order quantity. The optimal order quantity that will minimize total inventory cost. Or ABC system, where an inventory classification system in which a small percentage of A item account for most of the inventory values. It is also worthwhile to highlight economic order quantity. The basic of economic order quantity model is a formula for determining the optimal order size that minimizes the sum of carrying cost and ordering cost. The model formula is derived under a set of simplifying and restrictive assumptions as the following. Demand is known with certainty and is constant over time. No shortages are allowed. And lead time for the receipt or order is constant. The order quantity is received all at once. Order cycle, which is the time between receipt of order in an inventory cycle. The graph in this slide is the figure shows the inverse relationship between ordering cost and carrying cost, resulting in a convex total cost curve. With the input of cost, demand, and days per year, Excel will calculate the optimal order quantity, total cost, the number of orders per year, and the order cycle time. Costs are graphed for various quantity orders. Now we need to see what inventory order cycle means. These basic model assumptions are shown in this model, which describes the continuous inventory order cycle in the economic order model. An order quantity, Q, is received and is used to over time at a constant rate. When the inventory level decreases to the order point, R, a new order is placed, a period of time, referred to as the lead time. 
is required for delivery. The order is received all at once, just at the moment when demand the plates, the entire stock of inventory, the inventory level is zero, so there will be no shortage. This cycle is repeated continuously for the same order quantity, reorder point and lead time. After detailing different inventory control system, we need to identify the appropriate supply chain strategy because we need to apply different strategy in different business environment. When we experience demand uncertainty, it means we should use pool strategy. Lower demand uncertainty leads to an interest in managing the supply chain based on a long-term forecast. So the best is to apply push strategy. Let's see the difference between push and pull system. What's the characteristic of both push and pull? The objective is push system is minimize cost while the supply chain complexity is high and focusing on resource allocation. The lead time is long and the process is supply chain planning. Contrary Pool system objective is minimum service level, the complexity is low, the focus is on responsiveness, the lead time is short, and the process is order fulfillment. Generally, we can tell that we use pool system with mass production, like manufacturing functional products, and we apply pool system when we produce customized products also called innovative products. As I mentioned before, push strategy mainly used in mass production. That is related to economies of scales. But what we mean by economic of scales? The higher the importance of economics of scale in reducing cost, the greater the value of aggregating demand or the greater the importance of managing the supply chain based on long-term forecast, which is a push-based strategy. Economic of scales are not important when aggregation does not reduce cost or when a pool-based strategy makes more sense. Recent trend, however, is to apply a mixed push and pull system. But how and why we implement the mix of push and pull strategy? Most commonly, manufacturers with global supply chain and or customized product have benefit to apply push and pull strategy. These types of activities are correlated with the so-called production or logistics postponement, which is highlighted at the first figure. The second figure shows the typical economics of scale type of production, like mass manufacturing. Push and pull strategy when achieving the appropriate design depend on many factors, such like product complexity, manufacturing lead time, or supplier-manufacturer relationship. Many ways to implement push and pull strategy. Location of the push-pull boundary, for instance, that locates the boundary at the assembly points. Another example, furniture manufacturers locate the boundary at the production point. Now we need to see what sales and operation planning process means. Sales and operation planning is an aggregate planning process that determines the resource capacity a firm will need to meet its demand over an intermediate time horizon, for instance, 6 to 12 months in the future. Aggregate refers to sales and operation planning for product lines or families. Sales and Operation Planning SOP, matches supply and demand. The objective of establish a company-wide plan for allocating resources, develop an economic strategy for meeting demand. As shown in this figure, the Sales and Operation Plan should reflect company and strategic objective. Other inputs include financial constraints, demand forecast for sales, and capacity constraint from operations. Given this input, the sales function develops a monthly sales plan. 
The sales plan is then shared with the operation functions that must convert sales to production requirements as economically as possible. Because of the uh, various factor and viewpoints considered, the sales and operation plan is often referred to as the company's game plan for the coming year, and deviations from the plan are carefully monitored. Monthly SOPs meeting reconcile differences in supply, demand, and new product plans. An economic strategy for meeting demand can be attained by either adjusting capacity or managing demand. Strategies for managing demand can be shifting demand into other time periods, such like incentives, sales promotion, advertising campaigns. Offering product or service with counter-cyclical demand patterns or patterning with suppliers to reduce information distortion along the supply chain. Quantitative techniques for aggregate planning are, for instance, pure strategies, mixed strategies, linear programming, transportation method, or other quantitative techniques. We can distinguish hierarchical nature of planning into two different types. Disaggregation, which is breaking an aggregate plan into more detailed plans. For instance, create master product schedule for material requirements planning. Another type of planning is the collaborative planning, which is sharing information and synchronizing production across supply chain. Part of collaborative planning forecast and replenishment involves selecting products to be jointly managed, creating a single forecast of customer demand and synchronizing production across supply chain. Let's see what are the main features of master production schedule. Drives an MRP process with a schedule of finished products. Quantities represent production, not demand. Quantities may consist of combination of customer orders and demand forecast, or quantities represent what need to be produced, not what can be produced. Quantities also represent end items that may or may not be finished products. Cumulative lead times, total length of time need to manufacture or product. Or the last one is time fence. Well, management spe uh, specify date within which no changes are allowed in the MSP. The next topic is enterprise resource planning which is a software that organizes and manages a company's business process by sharing information across functional areas, such as accounting, sales, distribution, manufacturing, planning, purchasing, human resources, logistics and inventory, or integrating business processes, facilitating customer integration, and providing benefit to global companies. ERP system also helps companies manage their resources efficiently and at the same time better serve their customers. ERP simplifies customer interaction and speed production within its configured to order capabilities. We, with enterprise resource planning, experts can analyze business process, able to choose which process have the biggest impact on customer relationship, which process would benefit the most from integration, or which process should be standardized. Enterprise resource planning are also a line level of sophistication. Final is delivery and access, or link with the external partners. The next main topic within sales and operation management is customer relationship management. This is also a software that plans and executes business processes, involves customer interaction, changes a focus from managing product to managing customer, analyzes point of sales data for patterns used to predict future behavior, 
as approaching towards production and logistics with the next topic we're focusing on is lean management. Shortened product life cycles, demand customers, globalization and e-commerce have placed intense pressure on companies for quicker response and shorter cycle times. One way to ensure a quick turnaround is by holding inventory. But inventory costs can easily become sky high, especially when product obsolescence is considered. A wiser approach is to make your operating system lean and agile, able to adapt to changing customer demand. Lean production means doing more with less. Less inventory, fewer workers, less space. The term was coined by James Womack and Daniel Jones to describe the Toyota production system, widely recognized as the most efficient manufacturing system in the world. Basic element of Lean, the Toyota production system evolved slowly over a span of 20 years, initially known as just-in-time. It emphasizes minimizing inventory and smoothing the flow of material so that material arrived just as it was needed. As the concept widened its scope, the term lean production became more prevalent. If you produce only what you need when you need it, there is no room for error. For lean production to work well, many fundamental elements must be in place. For instance, TD production, flexible resources, extremely high quality, reliable equipment, reliable suppliers, quick setup, and the discipline to maintain these elements. The seven ways of lean is, for instance, movement, searching for tools, parts, instruction. Second one is defects, rework or scrap, processing, for instance, unnecessary steps that do not add value, inventory, storing, retrieving, insuring, taking up space and money. Fifth one is overproduction. Items we cannot immediately use or waiting for parts, machines or downstream operations. And the seventh one is transporting, moving items needlessly. To smooth the flow of the operation, we need to apply pool system. Pool system includes the following. Material is pulled through the system when needed. Reversal of traditional pool system where material is pushed according to the schedule. Forces cooperation. Prevent over and under production. While pool system rely on predetermined schedule, pool system rely on customer requests. For lean system to work well, quality has to be extremely high because there is no time, space and money for extra inventory to buffer against defective units. Producing in smaller lots encourages better quality. Workers can observe quality problems more easily. When problems are detected, they can be traced to their sources and reminded without reworking too many units. Quality improves when problems are made visible and workers have clear expectation of performances. Let's see a real-life case. 85% of Nike brand footwear and 76% of Nike brand apparel by product volume was made on lean certified lines. More than 2.5 million people work at various stages throughout Nike's supply chain including more than 1 million in the factories all around the world. Lean can benefit both factory owners and workers by increasing productivity, reducing environmental impacts, eliminating excessive overtime, and improving workers' conditions. Nike is now requiring a commitment to lean manufacturing and demonstrated progress towards a lean culture for contract factories. The next topic highlights the idea how to build a lean 
in the supply chain. Developing and maintaining a lean production system within a firm is difficult enough. Coordinating a lean supply chain across hundreds of different companies with different goals and cost structures is extremely challenging. The first step is to build a highly collaborative business environment that ensures all of the participants in the supply chain reap the rewards of leaner system. Adopting the technology to support such a system is purely secondary. Pulling a smooth flow of material through a series of suppliers to support frequent replenishment orders and changes in customer demand. Or, firms need to share information and coordinate demand forecasts, production planning, and inventory replenishment with suppliers and suppliers suppliers throughout the supply chain. Build a highly collaborative business environment or adapt to technologies to support your system. Finally, consider nearshoring. Last topic today is scheduling. But what is scheduling? So it is the last stage of planning before production occurs. It is also specifies when labor, equipment, and facilities are needed to produce a product or provide a service. What makes scheduling so difficult in a job shop is the variety of jobs that are processed, each with distinctive routing and processing requirements. In addition, although the volume of each customer order may be small, there are probably a great number of different orders in the shop at any one time. This necessitates planning for the production of each job as it arrives, scheduling its use of limit resources, and monitoring its progress through the system. The objective of scheduling are the followings. Meet customer due dates, minimize job lateness, Minimize response time or completion time. Minimize time in the system or overtime. Maximize machine or labor utilization. Minimize idle time. And minimize work in process inventory. Let's see a real case about scheduling in the service industry. Saving lives in an incredible payout for implementing a new schedule or allocation model. There are many scheduling problems in the healthcare area, from scheduling nurses and rooms to scheduling doctor's appointment and doling out vaccination. But one of the most critical scheduling problems involves organ transplants. Livers come from deceased donors and have a short shelf life of less than four hours. A simulation model was built to test out the proposed four districts, six district, and eight district models over a five-year time frame. Finally, the recommended four districts plan would save 554 lives, cost 25,000 less than other plans, and eliminate disparity between districts in receiving organs. In terms of advanced planning and scheduling system, there are four types of different scheduling. Infinite scheduling assumes infinite capacity, loads without regard to capacity, then levels the load and sequence jobs. Or finite scheduling assumes finite or limited capacity, where sequence jobs are part of the loading decision and resources are never loaded beyond capacity. Advanced planning and scheduling, which is based on adds into ERP system, constraints-based programming that identifies and solution space and evaluate alternatives, and manufacturing execution system, which monitors status, usage, availability, and quality. And theory of constraints, 
Dr. Goddard in the 70s developed a software system that used mathematical programming and simulation to create a schedule that realistically considered the constraints of a manufacturing system. The software produced good schedule quickly and was marked in the early 80s in the United States. He called his approach to scheduling the theory of constraints. General Motors and other manufacturers call it application synchronous manufacturing. The benefit of theory of constraints are the following. Not all resources are used evenly. Finite scheduling approach. Concentrate on the bottleneck resources. Synchronize flow through the bottleneck. And use process and transfer batch size to move product through facility. This is end of module F. Thank you for listening.